Hey there, where you at? This is the old uh, Hoser Etho up in them there Canada land, and I tell you woot. The other day I went out outside and I saw about uh, three feet of snow up out there. Um, Mother Moose r ran down the street and had been chased by a polar bear. It was, it was so cold out. I tell you what, you don't see that every day up in them near Canada land, bye. At the end of last episode, we started working on an expansion to our nether hub, a villager breeder system up above here. And I got a little bit more done on it. We have like the sandstone ground. We got some nether brick mixed in, some purple wool. I know everybody loves the purple wool. Oh yeah, it's just amazing. So we kind of had like a slope ceiling here. We might try to do that glass thing up there as well. And maybe we'll change the sandstone to smooth sandstone. I haven't decided, but we got to get some lighting up here. I tried like using the lanterns and I don't think they're going to work. The blue lanterns maybe, but they don't give off enough light to actually be useful, I think. So like I don't like the orange with the purple and the yellow and stuff. Uh, maybe it's not the worst thing in the world. I don't know. Kind of like what we did below is we had some purple glass in the walls and places. And I think we'll do something similar. Either full block or uh, I got some panes as well. And then I think we'll just hide lighting behind these. Uh, probably two blocks up so you can't see it at all. I think if it's over here, that wouldn't look as good. Yeah, I don't like that. So we got to get at least a block higher. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Maybe we'll just, like, punch holes all the way down here. That could look cool, too. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> they just woke up. Uh, all right. Oh, snappers. We got this place all put together, and uh, it's very similar to the hub below. So we got, again, that nether brick. We got the glass in the ceiling. And uh, up in the middle there is my minecart elevator to get on top of the bedrock. So we kind of have to leave that there. Oh, and that's a lot of villagers, isn't it? <laughs> Might have got a bit carried away with the number of beds and stuff. Uh, we'll probably start shipping these guys out to other places in our world, and then I won't refeed them for a long time until population drops down to like 10 or so. So yeah, the idea is if we need a villager now anywhere in our world, we got these drop shoots on each of the four uh, tunnels. Maybe we'll put them in a minecart. They won't take fall damage that way. All right, everybody. Well, I think our plan for today is just to do a bunch of random stuff around our world. That's, that's my fancy way of saying I don't have a plan. <laughs> but no, I got like a hundred things on my list I want to do. And uh, most of them aren't really... Uh, they're just like random little projects. So I recently have been like making a bunch of mini farms in creative. And one that I thought was pretty good was a cocoa bean farm I did. So I want to add that into our world for brown dye. And uh, let's just build it together here really quick. Uh, this is going to be the, for the storage. And, uh, right, you guys are paying attention, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we get some hoppers in here. It's going to be double hopper speed. So we got one hopper going into the chest here and one going in over there. So cocoa beans will transfer super fast. And uh, in order to plant cocoa beans, it has to be on jungle wood. So we get a piece of jungle wood there. We'll plant them there. There's two dispensers. You can bone meal cocoa beans. So we're going to put bone meal in these dispensers. we got to be very careful those sheep don't get out. If they do, or we're in big trouble. They're going to take over the world. Nobody's going to be happy with that. Okay, let's... Uh... I just realized you guys aren't going to be able to see too well here. <laughs> this might have been a bad idea. Okay, we'll get a piece of redstone there on that one. And... We'll have to put one here too. Shift, click, there we go. You, you, you see what's happening here? Now we just need a clock running to trigger those dispensers. So we're gonna use an observer clock. There's two observers facing each other. Like a so. In here, clicking away. And now we'll have an on off switch for this thing by moving one of these out of the way. Oh, is he gonna get out? I think we're good. Get a torch up there. Here, I think you can escape here. Oh, he was just about to make a run for it. So you might have noticed when we first set this up, it was kind of going like click, 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 click. And now, twice the speed. I didn't change anything. That's just what happens when you uh, put the, hook the lever up to this. All right. So now we got to hook up a harvester for it as well. We're just going to use a piston to do that. But we got to get a piece of redstone on top of the, the cocoa bean block. Is where the cocoa beans go. Uh, but we got to make sure it doesn't connect to the other ones next to it. So we're going to put a block over top here cut it off and now we're gonna add some chests up here for bone meal so that will flow down to the dispensers it just takes two bone meal to grow a cocoa bean to maturity 
unlike like uh, wheat and stuff, which sometimes takes three. There's always two. And then all we gotta do is get our piston right facing down at the cocoa bean. Kinda hard to do. Got it. Okay, good. And we'll put a repeater over top of that. We can break our lever for now. <laughs> the lever was just there because it's annoying. Okay, we're gonna move it up to over here now. Whew. And that's our on off switch. And we can just decorate it however we want. I'm gonna put some blocks in front. And just for looks, you might want to put a trap door in front of your hopper or something. But that's about it. We just flip this to turn it on. And we uh, right click with our cocoa bean. Look at that. <laughs> All the brown dye you could ever want. It is mass producing this stuff like super quick. All right, so this is like loaded up. Funneling down here at two times the speed. Oh, those poor guys. They have even less space now. <laughs> I just covered up the redstone with some hay bales. Uh, we're going to head over to the end now, and I got a bit of a weird project I want to do over there. So let's take our ender porter. Bam. I've been using this thing a lot. It is actually really awesome. And we are there. Yeah, I kind of want to build some kind of transportation system in the end to get to those types of portals and also to get to the, our main portal here. From our obsidian platform here, dig out a tunnel, like a 3x3 three three tunnel, that goes right to our portal and all those other little portals. And fill it up with water and then get a dolphin here so we get dolphin's grace and can just zip right through our, our end nice and quick. It's going to be a lot of digging though. <laughs> this is going to take a long time. And we're going to need to get some soul soil. Watch your step, watch your step. You're going to fall! You're going to fall! It's about a hundred block tunnel actually, so we're gonna line the floor with the soul soil so we get the soul speed effect from our boots and go even quicker through it. Okay, I think we're ready to start flooding this thing, so let's get doing that. Just have to go all along here with our water. So we're gonna want to build like a wall around the platform here, so when the dolphin comes through He's not going to jump off the edge on us. Now for the easy part, we just got to get a dolphin into the end. That shouldn't be too tough, right? I have no idea. Did they did they come out of the water if you, if you pull them out? Oh yeah, no problem. No problem. So we're about uh, two, three hundred blocks away from our stronghold base, actually. Now we got to make sure. <laughs> this is a little bit confusing, but they will die if they stay in the air too long, and they'll die if they stay in the water too long. So they kind of got to alternate as we go here. I, we got a few, I think two minutes so that they can stay out of water. Woohoo! I'm gonna name you Speedy. Okay. I think we're ready to go, Speedy. Let's do this. <laughs> Give him a slow falling potion. Uh, what do you guys think about this idea, by the way? I was thinking it might be cool with the 1.17 update. With, uh... The lightning rods and stuff, what if they make it so that charge creepers drop TNT? Huh? So that'll uh, give a reason for like actually wanting to use the uh, lightning rods and like setting up a charge creeper farm and farming TNT from them. I think that could be pretty cool. It'll kind of also help solve the whole uh, TNT duping glitch that they still haven't fixed because <laughs> I don't think they want to. Because uh, there's no replacement for it in the game. That'll be a way of getting the TNT. And then they just need to add a way of uh, moving TNT. Uh, anyways, we are about here, Speedy. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, let me let me guide you through. You gotta be quick. We're running out of time. I know you're excited to see outside of the ocean and stuff. But you, we gotta go here. Oh, man. I think we're running out of time. Come on, Speedy. Go in. There we go, we got him. I'm gonna flood it as soon as I go through, I think. Oh, he went th He went in, okay, cool. Uh, this is tricky. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give him some water. Oh yeah, that's, actually, that's what I should do. I should just use the water to get him where I want him. All right, Speedy. Okay, we got the glass there, good, good, good. We're gonna block this. Okay, he's trapped. And now we... Oh, I killed the water! Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Whew. <laughs> we need that water. Okay, now I'm gonna add the water right there. 
bam we got speedy in place so as long as he's in a bubble stream like that he will never suffocate uh otherwise like if you just leave him in water they'll die if you leave him in air they'll die so when i was cleaning up a block went in there with them and I don't know if he's refreshing the despawn time on that every time it like goes to his nose. He's like non-stop doing it though. So I'm wondering if that block will stay there forever or if it's going to decay after five minutes. All right. So we also got a bubble elevator that goes from our tunnel up to the portal. Uh, now what we're going to be doing is fighting a couple withers because we have no more beacons left. I want to set up a speed two beacon for this tunnel as well. So let's get to doing that. And I want to see if it's going to blow up our glass here. <laughs> Probably will. We'll just put endstone there if it does. Uh, yeah, we got tons of endstone from, from all that mining. Look at all. Oh, it didn't. It didn't blow up the glass. Nice. Oh, yeah, it's still there. So if you want to keep a item around for some reason, that's one way to refresh it. Let's give this thing a try now. Okay, so the idea is we're going to come into the end, and like a lot of times we do this just to get back to spawn, so then we just hold, hold control. And honestly, the slowest part about that was the elevator. Hmm, is there a faster elevator we could do? I wonder. Uh-huh, so that's pretty cool, but we have also added in another tunnel, which we're going to try out now. I haven't tried it yet. Don't know how it's going to work. <laughs> And we'll probably be adding more in the future to go other places like these these little portal things. Um, but yeah, let's let's give this a try. So there's a there, whoa. Okay, I, I whizzed right past it. Just gotta be careful how I do it, I guess. There we go. That's better. And it'll launch us out. How far did that take us from the island? Ah, uh, not as far as I was hoping. I was hoping it'd like really launch us. Maybe I gotta hold space before I leave the exit. Maybe we dragged on the ground. I don't know, I was kind of hoping it would like launch us right to the end, this thing over here, but I guess it doesn't quite take you all the way. It gets a, a nice boost to it, though, for sure. Yeah, the friction in this game just kind of sucks. <laughs> the air friction, it like instantly stops you, no matter how fast you're going. Okay, I tried it a couple more times here, and there is a trick to it. We gotta press space right when we exit the tunnel to activate our elytras. And then we kind of just like soar all the way here without even needing a rocket. Yeah, so here's an idea. Maybe instead of using a bubble elevator at the end, let's build a staircase using slabs to get up there. Because it's only, I think, like 10 blocks we got to climb. If you try to swim vertically in water, it's very slow. So we don't want to do that. But if we can uh, staircase up with slabs, it should be very fast. Uh, if we can do it. Let's test it out. I actually don't know, to be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah, we go over top of it. Look at that. Awesome. Whoa! And the cool thing is you get the soul soil uh, speed effect through slab, so we shouldn't get a big, like, camera jerk. Yep, yep. So we changed our tunnel slightly here. We have a staircase now. Every two blocks, we go up one vertically, and we have soul soil below the slab so that we still keep that uh, soul speed effect. Okay, here we go. And... Okay, it kind of slows you down a bit, I think. Yeah, I think with that, we were slamming it to the sides of the slabs. Just because we're moving so fast, we would need to space it out even more. Like, every four blocks go up one, or maybe even every six. But it was better than the bubble elevator, so we'll probably leave it like that. Uh, anyways, we are going to be doing something else here. Well, <laughs> I'm going to show you a failed attempt I, I did here. I thought it would be cool if we could hook the Ender Porter network up to uh, Nether Portals. And then be able to hit and hit a button and teleport to the portal and go through all in one sort of thing here. So we got our Ender Pearl hovering over here. Uh, the problem is it's actually really tough to do. <laughs> so, and then I want it to close after we go through too. So I set up some chains here to align the pearl properly. So we're still we're hovering over the water. We can throw it down. Uh, the problem is, if that pearl gets too close to the portal, it'll actually go through the portal. That's one issue. This is what we want to happen right here, where we go into swimming mode. And having the chain above us does that, but it doesn't seem to happen consistently. But when that happens, we like instantly start going through the portal once we teleport. Which is the dream. 
So we'll either teleport into the water, onto the portal block, or somewhere in between. We want to teleport somewhere in between, like we just did. See, we're going through the portal. We're getting that hovering screen thing. And while we're here, we can still throw the pearl down within the four seconds it takes to go through. So that's the perfect situation. But you see, this time it didn't happen. <laughs> we're standing on the portal blocks, and sometimes we go in the water even. So I don't know why it's not consistent. And that is why this isn't really working out. That time the pearl went through the portal. Honestly, though, I think this is a case where I'm being more fancy than I need to be. Like, if you think about it, my goal is to have a button at an ender porter to take me to the nether portal. And we can build nether portals wherever we want. Why don't we just build a nether portal at each ender porter and then have a button to go through? Uh, the big downside I would say to this, though, is it's going to be harder to make it look good because <laughs> we're... Uh, obsidian doesn't look the best and it's gonna take more space and all that kind of stuff compared to just teleporting somewhere else and going through a portal yeah I'm not sure the best way of doing that to be honest I'm gonna have to think about it a bit more maybe you guys have ideas for it uh, but we're gonna change things up now we're over at the lab <laughs> uh, I thought we'd do a little bit of progress here this is a small build so I think by far I asked you guys what I should add to this thing and uh, one important thing I forgot was the aqua affinity helmets we're gonna add like uh, somewhere to pick that up here. But uh, what I want to build today is another suggestion you guys had to add some kind of uh, like cobblestone generator. I think that's a good idea because this is the mining lab and that would be a way of generating infinite blocks to test out the mining on, right? Yeah, I think it kind of fits the theme. What's the center here? Right over there. This is the technical way of... Uh, lining things up just make sure you don't move your mouse around too much uh okay so i think this is the middle right over here so what we're gonna do is build like a cobblestone generator but not, that's not all i also want to build a stone generator and a basalt generator and try combine them all together uh, each one has a different hardness so that's great for testing things i think we'll do like basalt Maybe stone here and cobblestone over here and like try to squeeze them this close together and build some sort of like decorative machine for it. Uh, if there's one group of blocks I very rarely use in this game, it's the glazed terracotta. But I recently saw like someone use it in a build and they combined like five to seven different colors of glazed terracotta together and it looks so cool. It really inspired me to try to use this stuff more. Um... But man, I suck at it. <laughs> okay, I think this will work. This will work. That's cool, right? It's an odd number, right? So we gotta we gotta do something weird with it. This stuff works best when you're working with even numbers. Because uh, it's like two by two patterns. Yeah, okay, let's do it like this. We'll get the donuts then. I think that'll be good. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. Maybe let's bump this back one more block, actually. Okay, well, we got a basic shape for our machine figured out now. Uh, we'll have to dress it up a lot, though. I'm going to add a border around around here. The idea behind the magma blocks is like kind of like in a metal factory when they're extruding metal. I want to make it look like we're squeezing this through a die. <laughs> and it's like heating up the, the area around it, you know. Uh, we're going to add some signs above this properly with their hardness levels and stuff like that. I want to get some pipes running into here with water and lava and also like some campfires to make it look like it's smoking or steaming. But before we get to fully decorating this thing, let's actually make sure we can do the redstone part of it. Uh, usually when I do redstone, I figure out the interface first. So we kind of got a idea of what we're doing now. And then uh, you do the redstone, then you do the final detailing. Okay, so because sometimes like you'll <laughs> you'll do the redstone and you'll figure out, oh, I need more space than this or something and then it's like impossible to make it work and if you've detailed everything that's all just wasted effort then um okay so we gotta get soul soil below we gotta get ice we gotta get lava on the other side our piston over here okay that's basalt done now we gotta do cobblestone uh, okay, so we built another smart piston over here. We're going to have water next to the note block. It'll go down. And then we're going to make the lava flow into that. I think we can break this now. I hope. Okay, I made cobblestone. Yes, yes. 
And then for the stone one, it's going to be a bit more tricky because we can't do the note block uh, smart piston thing. What we're going to do instead, we got a observer down there. It's going to try to detect when the water disappears. So if the stone appears, the water will disappear and it'll make the piston extend. Is the thought anyways. Let's see if it actually works. Okay. That shuts off the water. Oh, it pushes twice. Seems to be fine, though. Oh, snappers. All right, everybody, check it out. We got her done. We worked out the final details on this thing. Uh, so we got a lava pipe flowing into one side. We got a water pipe into the other. They combined together to make the different uh, different stones here. Uh, put some orange glass on the lava side, blue glass on the, the water side. In the middle, we got brown glass. And in the back there, we got some campfires with the, the smoke or the steam rising up. Just put that on top of our redstone. Um, seems to work okay. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, these are supposed to be like pressure gauges and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not the best with like uh, imaginary details. Uh, we got some vents in the back here with the blast furnaces. And uh, yeah, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. It felt pretty lonely on its own. So I added in some more of these column things as a like a color contrast and to, to bulk it up. Uh, we got nether brick in the back there like we did over there to keep it consistent. And all in all, seems to be good. So when we mine these out, they'll start auto-producing. We can test out our tools then. This one's working, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> got worried for a second there. This is very slow. Uh, anyways, it, it's kind of like a gimmicky, fun little build, but... Uh, I enjoyed doing it, so I hope you guys liked it too. But anyways, guys, I think it's about time we wrap up for today. So the comment says, Hey, Etho, I noticed that you explained the mechanics of Minecraft, like the speed potion trick and things like that. I really appreciate these things because they make me better at the game. On with my question. Why did you start doing this? Yeah, so I would say, uh, like, talking about game mechanics has been pretty key to the series, like, ever since it started. That's just something we've always kind of done, right? <laughs> uh, I think a large reason for that is because it's just the way I naturally tend to play video games. I love learning games at a base level, like the key mechanics on how they work. Um, not just Minecraft, like all games. That's, like, something I focus on a lot. Um, for whatever reason, it's just something I enjoy. And then, like, a lot of people hate replaying video games. Like, if they have to start over or something, they just dread it. But I love it for some reason. Because <laughs> usually I'll, I'll play through, and then the second time I play through, it's like, oh, I could apply all these things I learned the first time and play much better the second time. And then the third time, you get to do even better, and it feels rewarding that way to me. Which is probably one of the main reasons why roguelikes are one of my favorite types of games. Because uh, they're designed for replayability and improving your skills and stuff. Um, but yeah, just in general, I think learning games at a base level makes you better at them. It adds more depth to the game, so you appreciate them more. Minecraft becomes more interesting to, to people that way. And uh, all in all, I think it's a good thing, right? I hope. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching. Until the next one, take care. Have a good day. Don't hit the iron golem. Bye-bye. <laughs>